The air crackled with anticipation. Murrayfield, Scotland's rugby cathedral, was buzzing. Fans in kilts and blue jerseys roared as their heroes took the field. It was a day for legends, a day for Scotland to shine. Across the pitch stood Fiji, a team known for their flair and unpredictability. They were here to spoil the party, to silence the Scottish roar. The Fijians, with their own passionate supporters scattered throughout the stands, carried the hopes of a nation thousands of miles away. The atmosphere was electric, a mix of bagpipes, drums and chanting. The Scottish fans, known for their unwavering support, created a sea of blue and white. The noise was deafening as the players lined up for the national anthems. This wasn't just a game, it was a battle for pride, a test of skill and determination. As the last notes of the anthems faded, the referee blew his whistle and the battle commenced. From the first whistle, Scotland played with intensity and purpose. Their forwards, like a well-oiled machine, dominated the breakdown, securing quick ball for their backs. The Scottish backs, with their speed and agility, exploited every gap in the Fijian defence. Finn Russell, Scotland's maestro, with the number 10 on his back, orchestrated the attack with precision. His passes found their mark, his kicks pinned Fiji deep in their own half. Scotland's game plan was clear pressure, pace and power. The crowd erupted as Scotland scored their first try within minutes. It was a textbook try, a display of teamwork and skill that left the Fijians reeling. The Scots were in their groove and Murrayfield was rocking. But Fiji, true to their reputation, wouldn't back down. They fought back with fierce tackles and powerful runs trying to disrupt Scotland's rhythm. The first half was a tight affair, a seesaw battle between two proud rugby nations. Amidst the intensity of the match, one player stood out, a blur of blue and white terrorising the Fijian defence. Darcy Graham, Scotland's pocket rocket winger, was having a day to remember. Graham, known for his lightning speed and elusive footwork, was simply unstoppable. He sliced through tackles, leaving Fijian defenders grasping at air. His two tries in the first half were things of beauty, a testament to his raw talent and determination. His first try came from a perfectly timed interception. He read the Fijian pass like a book, snatched the ball out of the air and sprinted towards the try line, the crowd roaring him on. His second try was a display of individual brilliance, a mazy run that left several Fijian defenders clutching at straws. It wasn't just his tries, it was his all-round performance that caught the eye. He chased every kick, tackled with ferocity and was a constant threat in attack. Darcy Graham was putting on a masterclass. Despite Scotland's dominance, Fiji refused to be mere bystanders in their own downfall. They dug deep, drawing on their renowned physicality and offloading game. The Fijian forwards, like palm trees swaying in a hurricane, put in some bone-jarring tackles, reminding Scotland that this was no walk in the park. Their backs, renowned for their ability to create something from nothing, showed glimpses of their brilliance. Their offloads, like basketball passes in a game of rugby, kept the Scottish defence on their toes. Fiji, despite trailing on the scoreboard, was not going down without a fight. Their efforts were rewarded with a try of their own, a moment of individual brilliance that ignited the Fijian fans scattered throughout Murrayfield. It was a reminder that Fiji, even when behind, is never truly out of the game. The first half ended with Scotland in the lead, but Fiji had served notice that they would not be easy to put away. The second half promised to be another bruising encounter. Section 5, a second half surge. The second half began much like the first, with Scotland on the front foot. They continued to play with pace and precision, their forwards laying the platform for their backs to shine. The Scottish backs, with Darcy Graham leading the charge, continued to test the Fijian defence. Fiji, despite their best efforts, seemed to be tiring. The relentless pressure exerted by the Scots was taking its toll. Their tackles, once ferocious, lost some of their sting. Their attacks, once full of flair, became more predictable. Scotland capitalised on Fiji's fatigue, scoring two quick tries in the opening minutes of the second half. The first came from a powerful line-out drive, a testament to their dominance in the set pieces. The second, a moment of pure opportunism, saw Finn Russell intercept a loose pass and race away to score under the posts. The game was slipping away from Fiji. Scotland, with their tails up, sensed victory. The crowd at Murrayfield, sensing a famous win, roared their approval. 
A Section 6 crossing the line Scotland's try-scoring blitz. With the game seemingly secured, Scotland could have been forgiven for taking their foot off the gas. But this Scottish team under Gregor Townsend's leadership is made of sterner stuff. They continued to attack relentlessly, determined to finish the game in style. And finish in style they did. Try after try followed, each one met with a deafening roar from the Murrayfield faithful. It was a display of attacking rugby at its finest. A blend of power, pace and precision. The Fijians, to their credit, never gave up, but they were simply outmatched on the day. The final whistle blew, signalling a comprehensive victory for Scotland. The crowd erupted, a sea of blue and white celebrating a memorable win. Section 7, Gregor Townsend's verdict. As the players made their way off the field, exhausted but exhilarated, Gregor Townsend, Scotland's head coach, allowed himself a wry smile. He knew his team had put on a show, a performance that would live long in the memory. I'm incredibly proud of the boys, Townsend said in his post-match interview. They played with real heart and determination today. We knew Fiji would be tough opponents and they certainly didn't disappoint. He reserved special praise for Darcy Graham, the man of the match. Darcy was outstanding today, Townsend said. He's a real handful for any defence. His work rate is phenomenal and his finishing was top class. Townsend, however, was quick to point out that it was a team effort. Everyone played their part today, he said. Our forwards were dominant, our backs were clinical and our defence was solid. It was a complete performance. Section 8, the road ahead for Scotland. The victory over Fiji was a statement of intent from Scotland. It showed that they are a team to be reckoned with, a team capable of beating anyone on their day. But Townsend knows that bigger challenges lie ahead. Scotland is building towards the Rugby World Cup and they will be hoping to carry this form into that tournament. They have the talent and the belief to go far, but they will need to maintain this level of performance if they are to challenge for the ultimate prize. For now, though, Townsend and his team can savour this victory. They have earned the right to celebrate. They have given their fans a day to remember, a day that will live long in the annals of Scottish rugby history. The Section 9. A Final Thought. As the sun began to set over Murrayfield, casting long shadows across the empty pitch, one couldn't help but feel a sense of pride in the Scottish performance. They had played with passion, skill and determination, embodying the true spirit of rugby. Darcy Graham's performance in particular was a joy to behold. He is a special talent, a player who lights up every game he plays. With players like Graham in their ranks, Scotland's future looks bright. The win over Fiji was a reminder of the power of rugby, its ability to unite a nation, to inspire hope and joy. It was a day that Scottish rugby fans will cherish for years to come.